Hello, my name is Kishmani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishmani. We are here because we want to learn about homonyms. Today is our last lesson, the tenth lesson in the series of ten lessons on the topic of, as I said, homonyms. What are homonyms? We have learned it before several times. Homonyms are two words that have different spellings, they have different meanings, and yet for some strange and inexplicable reason, they are pronounced in the same manner. They have different spelling, two words, they have different spellings, they mean different things, and yet they are pronounced in the same manner. And those are called homonyms. Let's begin. We'll pick up from number 91. Yesterday, in the part 9, we stopped at number 90, so we're going to pick up at 91. And the word is cereal. This cereal and this cereal. S E I R A. Cereal. And they are both they are both pronounced in the same manner, obviously. That's why they are homonyms. Cer E L. Cereal. This cereal as in breakfast. And this cereal is in a series of numbers. Or we're going to speak of a serial killer. Serial killer is so called because, not because he enjoys to his cereal in the morning. But let's not go there. Number 92, shall we? But they are homonym, serial. They finally caught the serial killer who is known to enjoy his cereal in the morning. This word is pronounced choose, which of course is a verb, to choose, to make a choice. And this word right here, let's put it in a capital letter, the word is chew, which is a verb, to chew, to chew, I want to, I like to chew my gum. Mm, 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 mm. I want to chew my gum. He chews, he chews his gum very loudly. He chews his gum, his gum very very annoyingly. I don't like the way he chews his gum. He chews, he chews his gum very annoyingly. I don't know why he chooses, I don't know why he chooses to chew his gum in that manner. But he always chooses to chew that way. Very annoying. Number 93. Number 93. This is pronounced feet, of course, as in the plural of foot, as in plural of foot, foot either as in foot at the end of your leg or foot as in the unit of measurement that we use in the US. We do not use meters, we do not, uh, in the US, we don't have the metric system. That concept is not quite permeated in the US society. Over here, they prefer to use feet and yards. Feet is a plural of foot. Foot as in one foot and as a unit of measurement or your foot. My feet are hurting. My feet are hurting. The, that feet right here. And that is a homonym of this feet. F-E-A-T. -E feet. Which is also pronounced the exact same way. Of course they are pronounced the same way. Of course they are pronounced in the exact same way. Which is why they are homonyms. Let's learn the meaning of this word, feet, shall we? This feet that we just put down here, this feet right here, what is it? It's a noun, first of all. It's a noun. It's an act. It's an act of... It's an act of achievement. I hope in... Pray to God that I spell it correctly. 
and if I did spell it correctly, that would be quite a feat for me. That would be quite a feat for me if I spell it correctly. Because spelling is not my forte. We learned the word forte. We learned the word forte and we learned the antonym of it, foible. We learned both of these words in our vocabulary lessons in day 1 through 75. I just don't know which, which day right now because I don't have the list in front of me. Forte, forte is somebody's strong point. If you're good at something, you said that that is my forte. Music is my forte. Foible is somebody's weak point. You might say that Mary's, uh, Mary's foible is, is, his, uh, is her is her, uh, is her sweet teeth, is, is her lightness, is her inclination, is her predilection for sweets. She loves sweets, she loves chocolate or her, her foible uh, purses or whatever it is, or, or sandals. That's her weak point, she cannot resist it. If she sees a nice pair of sandals, she must buy them. That's her foible, that's her weak point. Forte is the strong point. How do, where do we go? Feet. It's an act of achievement. I hope I spell it correctly. And if I did achieve, if I did, if I did spell it correctly, that would be quite a feat for me. Because spelling is not my forte. The terms forte and foible come from fencing. Let's carry on. So it's an act of achievement if you like. It's an act of, it's an act of courage. It's an act of achievement. It's an act of courage. That's something that requires a great deal of courage. It's an act of skill, something that requires a great deal of skill. It's an act of endurance. Something that is full of hardship and you have to endure a lot of hardship. That's, that's a feat. Something that requires a great deal of imagination. If you achieve something that requires a great deal of imagination, something that an ordinary person cannot do, well that's a feat or something that requires simply physical strength. If you, if you manage to lift uh, uh, the dumbbells of uh, two pounds each, well, that's quite a feat. Do you understand? What a feat! What a, what a feat! What an achievement! Wow, you did a good job! You did a wonderful job. What a feat. That was perfect. That was superb. The way, the way you played that piece on the violin, that was superb. That was quite a feat. That was quite an achievement. That was quite a feat. Not this feat. This feat. Number 94. Number 94. I'm going to put the pair, pair of words down first and then I'm going to tell you something. Which means, which means to, we need the room, we need the room, so we need the room. Which means to make sure, to make sure, make sure, to guarantee, to make certain, to make, Certain. This, this, this ensure means to, to, to guarantee something, to make certain of, uh, to, to, to make certain, to be sure of something. This word and this word, this, this, this word. I, I notice I'm not pronouncing them right now. A lot of people tend to think that they are homonyms. A lot of people tend to think that they are homonyms. Those people, alas, are not correct. Are not right. This word is pronounced. This word is pronounced. Ensure. But you say when you say it fast, it's difficult to figure out. Ensure and this one is pronounced. Ensure. To ensure something is to buy the insurance, to purchase insurance uh, on your car, life insurance to ensure you. You can insure your life. You can insure your boat, your house, your car, whatever it is. Do you understand? or even your mother-in-law, if that is what one wishes. So that's ensure. 
So don't confuse. Ensure and ensure these are not homonyms. So even though I put a 94 there, 94 does not count. It is wrong. We need the room, of course, so we need to erase this thing. Just give me one second. We are up to 95. Ninety-five is another example of a pair of words which a lot of the time people pronounce them in the same way but they are not homonyms and the words are this one is pronounced the first syllable is ek, ek, except, except and the first first syllable here is not ek, it is ik, except. So someone who is very picky about pronunciation might not agree with you that these two words are homonyms because they are not homonym, they are not homonyms strictly speaking. Except and except, except and except. This except, of course, as in to accept something, I accepted the job. I accepted all the gift except this one. The noun of this one, of course, is an exception. Exception. Except. You understand? Except and skip. Except and except. They are not homonyms. Even though, even though a lot of people will tell you that they are because we pronounce them in such a rushed way that they sound like homonyms. Number 96. Number 96 we have R-O-L-E, which is a role, a role as in the role that one plays in a play, as in role that one plays in a drama or a play, role, and we have this role, which has two meanings. One can roll a dice, roll a dice. Come on, go ahead and roll the dice. Let's see what, what you get. Or you can have a roll of paper. Ro roll a paper towel. Roll of paper towels. Roll of roll of uh, uh, toilet to toilet paper. That's a that's a roll. Ro that roll, which is R O L L, is not to be confused with the role that one plays in a play, which is R O L E. But they're pronounced in the same way. Very simple pronunciation, roll. They are both pronounced in the exact same way, roll. Let's move on to 97. 97. We have this word right here, B O A R. B O N R A R, which is pronounced as. It has two pronunciation, bore or bore. The difference is so subtle that you can't even catch it. Bore, it says, you keep it simple, which is a wild pig. A boar is a wild pig. Not a domesticated pig, not a pig that you raise in the farm to, 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 have, have, to have for your breakfast, uh, the bacon, but a wild pig is called a boar. Don't confuse this boar, B-O-A-R, with this pore, P O R E, which is a verb. To bore means to not be to not be interesting. To 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 not be interesting. To be to be dull. I find it boring. He bores me. He bores me. You understand? Bore, B O R E. You can also use this as a noun. If you use this word as a noun, then you're describing a person. This is a person who is not very interesting. A person who is not very interesting. A 
person who is not very interesting can be described as a bore. He is a bore. He bores me. He's not very interesting. He's very dull. He has a very dull personality. Now don't confuse this. If you're going to use this as a noun here, don't confuse this pronunciation as a bore. Don't confuse this pronunciation as a bore with this one right here, which is B-O-O-R, which is not pronounced bore. It is pronounced boor. A bore. What is a bore? Well, I'm going to leave it up to you to give you some incentive. To give you some incentive to watch the video and learn the word yourself. Okay? Vocabulary, day number 20 in this series right here. There are 75 of them. Just type in vocabulary words, day 20, or whichever exam that you're preparing with. Preparing for, just type in the word, name of the exam also. That would also work. For example, you might type in GRE vocabulary words or GMAT vocabulary words or SAT, SET, HESI vocabulary words, T's vocabulary words. The video will pop right up. Vocabulary words, day 20. Watch the video and learn this boor. Boor and boar. He is such a boor that I find him boring. Let's move on to 98. I won't tell you what the word means. As I said, I'm going to leave it up, for, leave it up to you. Number 98. Keep on going. Number 98. And the word is C H I L L I. And it's pronounced chili. Chili as in as in a chili paper or as in as in chili paper that we use in cooking or Chili as in, or as in, as in cold. It's a bit chilly out there. Boy, it's chilly in here. Can you raise the temperature? I feel chilly. Do you understand? I feel chilly. I feel cold. And this chili, C-H-I-L-E, which is also pronounced the exact same way. C-H-I-L-E. It's also pronounced in the exact same way, except this happens to be a country. It's a country in South America. Chile. Let's move on then. Number 99. The very last, uh, the penultimate one, not the very last one. An ultimate one, the second to the last one. This is a word I believe we learned on day number 11. I'm not sure about it. Penultimate, which simply means, which is a very fancy way of saying, second to the last. Number 99. And the word and the pair, the pair is C-O-L-O-N-E-L, -O -O which is pronounced Colonel, even though the spelling is very different, C O L O N E L. C O L O N E L, but the pronunciation is very different. Cur, no, colonel. And then we have this colonel right here. K E, K E. Just put it here. It's a country. It's a country. It's a country in South America in South America. And then we have this kernel. K-E-R-N-E-L. Again, pronounced in the exact same way. No difference. Cur. No. What is that kernel? That kernel as in a cone. As in a cone. A kernel of a cone. And this is this kernel. This kernel happens to be a person. It's a rank. It's a rank in military. Oh, I don't know how to spell military. I have no idea how to spell military. So we're going to skip that part. It's a rank in the army. It's a rank in the army. Then we're going to leave it at that. That's that's good enough for us. Colonel. 
the kernel loves to eat the kernels okay don't eat up all the kernels save some kernels for the kernel because he loves the kernel loves kernels he loves to eat those corn kernels do you understand the very last one 100 and that will be the end of our journey of hominums I don't know how I got into it but we were doing some vocabulary words and we came across a pair of homonyms and from there we started and that was the that was the beginning of the whole thing here and I thought I was going to make uh, two or three videos on, on homonyms and two or three turned into a five and the five turned into seven of them at one point I had listed uh, I had listed them on the blackboard as one of seven and then seven turned into a ten but this is it this is the last one and the word is Symbol. Let's learn this word first before we talk worry about the homonym. This symbol is usually this symbol usually comes as a pair. Pair of pair of symbols. Pair of symbols. Which is a let's write down the meaning. A pair of a pair of percussion instruments made out of brass usually the cylindrical uh, uh, semi-circle shape when I hear the word symbols in this context the very first thing that comes to my mind is the Bizet's very famous opera called Carmen and Carmen being a Spanish character, she used to play her cymbals with her hands. They come in a pair, of course, because otherwise it won't make sound. That's one kind of symbols where they come in pairs. And the meaning of the word symbol, the same exact, same exact idea, it's a musical instrument, but here it doesn't have to be pair, it's a single brass plate. It's a single, a single brass plate. Which is sounded by hitting with a drumstick, and often it's a very long spelling, uh, wrong meaning, but I'm going to write all it down. Often, as often, it is often a part of a set of drums in the orchestra if you have a drum in the concert usually your drummer in, in addition to the drums that he hits with his stick he also has a cymbal that he hits with one stick and it makes a sound it's a percussion instrument as I said and that also even though it's only one you hit it with your stick and it makes a sound and that instrument is also called a cymbal but of course there is a cymbal just one or you can have a pair of cymbals don't confuse this symbol, this is pronounced in the exact same way as the other symbol. Of course, when I said don't confuse, I was being silly obviously, because why would you confuse? They have nothing to do with each other, which is this symbol. Again, exact same pronunciation. Sim. Symbol. Which is a noun. As in icon as in icon, the symbol that you use. We use symbols in chemistry. The symbol for hydrogen is H, that's the symbol. The, the icon, the, what, that is what you use to represent it. That's the H denotes, H is a symbol of hydrogen. I need rooms, so I need to erase this word here. So I need room to do one last thing, actually a couple of very quick things before I completely forget and I, I, I close the video. This is the noun, can you tell me can you tell me the adjective? Can you tell me the adjective of this word? Symbol. Can you? What's the adjective? Symbol is a noun. What's the adjective? Adjective of symbol is symbolic. Adjective of symbol is symbolic. Can you tell me what is the verb of this this word? This is a noun. What's the verb of symbol? 
when you represent something with a symbol, we say that V, V, symbolized it. V symbolized it. Sim, bo, lies. Symbolize. Just don't, don't, don't worry about this thing. Then, as I said, this is that's the opera that comes to my mind all the time when I hear the word symbols because you know Carmen she goes around playing her symbols when she is dancing. So that symbol is a pair of symbols and this symbol. Symbol is in an icon. The adjective of symbol is symbolic and the verb would be symbolized. If you use symbol to represent something, we say that we symbolize it with that with that symbol. H in periodic table symbolizes hydrogen and N symbolizes nitrogen. On that note, we'll say Amen and that is the end of our series. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to pick up from where we left off the Hesse vocabulary series. We had to start at number 22, day number 22. I have three more days to go in Hesse vocabulary, which is right here. Where is Hesse? It's not listed here. The Hesse vocabulary words. As I said, I stopped at day number 23. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to pick up from where we left off from day number 23. And I have three more to go. 23, 24 and 25. Those three videos I have to do. And that will be the end of that series. And then after that, I'm going to do the GMAT problem from year 2015 book that just came out. The official guide 2015 GMAT. We're going to work on those in the very near future. Bye now.